So here we are at the capital of South Dakota, which is Pierre, South Dakota. And here's the Capitol building. Apparently this dome was so heavy that it caused the structure to buckle and they had to reinforce it later in like, I don't know how many years later, but uh, it's a big piece of uh, copper or brass or whatever it is up here. And here's uh, across there's the war memorial over there. And there's the Jesus bus right there. I'm just setting up right here. Beautiful grounds, and there's a nice lake over there. I'll take some photos for you if you check out the photos. And have a wonderful day. Lord bless you. Hi, I'm Charlie Garrett. I'm a minister from Sarasota, Florida, and I'm traveling to all of the 50 state capitals in order to preach about Jesus Christ, about our founding fathers, what they believed in, and how this was established as a Christian nation. And uh, just to basically give you an idea about the... Uh, the uh, different capitals and what they believed in their constitutions, etc. And today I'm standing at the capital of uh, North, South Dakota, which is Pierre, South Dakota. And as you can see, it's a big, beautiful building. Today is very nice, and I'm utterly surprised at the friendliness of the people in this state. They have just been unbelievable everywhere I've stopped. They've been just fantastic people. It's beautiful. There's open prairies that go on for miles and miles, and I really can't say enough about it. It really is wonderful. And if you notice in the bag here, I've got Hannah. She's uh, here, but I don't want to let her run all over the place. And uh, in order to speak actually on the Capitol steps, I would have to file a permit, and I'm Cheap Charlie, so I'm not going to do that. But anyway, I'd like to first uh, start by reading a prayer that I composed for the people of South Dakota. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Today I stand at the capital of South Dakota, my 28th state to visit, and the 40th accepted into our union. Exalted and glorious Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing me to this beautiful state so rich in the goodness you've provided to the sons of men. Oh God, a vast majority of the residents here claim the title of Christian, but you alone know the heart. I ask you today to bring about a great revival in this state. May your holy name be glorified as people turn to you with heartfelt adoration and praise. Send down your Holy Spirit upon these people and fill them, even to overflowing, so that the nation will know South Dakota belongs to the Lord. Let them never forget the words of our precious Savior, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. May this people search you out and have a hunger to know you, and the great work you wrought on our behalf. As the psalm says, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have pierced, burn offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, as you know, O oh Lord. This is my petition, and this is my prayer for the state of South Dakota, the Mount Rushmore state, whose motto is, Under God, the people rule. May it be so. May they be a people under you, ruling in righteousness. In Jesus' precious name, this prayer is made. Amen. And next I'd like to read to you the 95th Psalm. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did at Meribah, as you did that day at Massa in the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me, though they had seen what I did. For 40 years I was angry with that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And next I'd like to read to you the preamble to the Constitution of the state of South Dakota, reminding you that all 50 states mention God 
uh, as the sovereign ruler of the universe and invoking his name in one way or another, you know, to request for blessings or some other way, God is mentioned in all 50 of the state constitutions. We, the people of South Dakota, grateful to Almighty God for our civil and religious liberties in order to form a more perfect and independent government, establish justice, ensure tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and preserve to ourselves and to our posterity the blessings of liberty, do ordain and establish this constitution for the state of South Dakota. And next I'd like to read to you a proclamation by the United States Congress, which was issued, um, once again, the United States Congress. Uh, this is uh, issued for the purpose of a day of thanksgiving and fasting and prayer, and in, you know to uh, acknowledge God and his sovereign hand in our affairs. They reference Christianity, the Christian God, and um, understand that when this nation was established and the early founders had no problem mixing religion with uh, politics, none at all. What we hear today is an absolute fabrication and a lie about our uh, situation in America. By the United States and Congress assembled a proclamation, whereas it hath pleased the supreme ruler of all human events to dispose the hearts of the late belligerent powers to put a period to the effusion of human blood by proclaiming a secession of all hostilities by sea and land, and these United States are not only happily rescued from the dangers, distresses, and calamities which they have so long and so magnanimously sustained to which they have been so long exposed, but their freedom, sovereignty, and independence ultimately acknowledged by the great king, by the king of Great Britain, and whereas in the progress of a constant contest on which the most essential rights of human nature depended, the interposition of divine providence in our favor hath been most abundantly and most graciously manifested, and the citizens of these United States have every possible reason for praise and gratitude to the God of their salvation. Impressed Therefore, with an exalted sense of the magnitude of the blessings by which we are surrounded and of our entire dependence on that almighty being from whose goodness and bounty they are derived, the United States in Congress assembled do recommend it to the several states to set apart the second Thursday in December next as a day of public thanksgiving that all the people may then assemble to celebrate with one voice, grateful hearts and united voices, the praises of their supreme and all bountiful benefactor for his numberless favors and mercies that he hath been pleased to con conduct us in safety through all the perils and vicissitudes of the war, that he hath given us un unanimity and resolution to adhere to our just rights, that he hath raised up a powerful ally to assist us in supporting them and hath so far crowned our united efforts with success that in the course of the present year hostilities have ceased and we are left in the in undisputed possession of our liberties and independence than the fruits of our own land and in the free participation of the treasures of the sea that he hath prospered the labor of our husbandmen with plentiful harvests and above all that he hath been pleased to continue to, to us the light of the blessed gospel. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ they're referring to. And secure to us in the fullest extent the rights of conscience and faith and worship. And while our hearts overflow with gratitude and our lips set forth the praises of our great creator, that we also offer up fervent supplications that it may please him to pardon all our offenses, to give wisdom and unanimity to our public councils, to cement all our citizens in the bonds of affection, and to inspire them with an earnest regard for the national honor and interest, to enable them to improve the days of prosperity by every good work, and to be lovers of peace and tranquility, that he may be pleased to bless us in our husbandry, our commerce, and navigation, to smile upon our seminaries and means of education, to cause pure religion and virtue to flourish, to give peace to all nations, and to fill the world with glory. Done by the United States Congress assembled, witness His Excellency Elias Boudinet, our President, this 18th day of October in the year of our Lord, 1783, and of the sovereignty and independence of the United States of America, the 8th. So as you can see, the uh, United States Congress in every single sentence of that prog proclamation acknowledged an almighty and supreme being and thanked him for his providence and also acknowledged that it is the gospel of Jesus Christ by which we stand.